if your head is exploding because you're seeing these observables with chain sequences, with pure functions, and it's making your head explode, <laughs> relax, it's all good. Jesse Warden's gonna walk you through it. First, check out my arrow functions video to give you the basics of arrow functions in JavaScript. Next up, pure functions video, then the Lodash videos. Finally, you can look at one of the videos for chain. We have two styles of coding here. We have the synchronous Lodash parsing of a chain to make it a little easier to parse the JSON bit by bit, and it's a synchronous fashion, but we have to put it inside of this asynchronous call here. Once it's returned the data we needed from the server, we then parse it and then convert that back to a promise. Use RxJS to do that in one function rather than two. So we'll say const Rx and we'll import Rx lowercase const get old node functions as one line. Now all the tutorials online for RxJS, a lot of them show RxJS observables or subject. They create them on the page and then they play with the functions, right? Like get filter view, etc. And that's not what you're supposed to do in the real world. What you do is you return them from functions. I wish somebody had told me that it would have saved me a lot of time trying to learn RxJS. Say Rx observable from promise. So we're going to create an Rx observable from promise. We're going to pass in our list functions like before. RxJS also has a get, but it's called something different. It's a safe way to get values from objects without throwing an exception if something doesn't exist. So say functions. So now we're at the point where we've got our array. The difference between Lodash up here and RxJS is that we've got one value here. You can only return one value from the then or one error from the dot .catch. In Lodash, that's fine because the filter knows to loop through that array. RxJS treats this as a single item or a single value from that string that was emitted. So we gotta convert it back into something that has a bunch of values because we started from a promise. So we're gonna select many, say take this function list we got here and convert it into an Rx observable. Very similar to maps. If you know select many, think map, basically the same thing. From takes anything that's iteratable, means you can loop over it. You can loop over arrays, we'll pass in our function list. Now just a refresher, remember that in RxJS, a single value goes through the stream and when you subscribe, or think of it like the dot then, you only get one value out. If you have an array observable of three items, you're gonna get three values out. Because promises only ever give one value, you're only gonna get one value out. We wanna create it back to an observable so we can get a bunch of values out. Since we know that this function list is an array, we're like, all right, we got a promise. Now let's tell RxJS, by the way, this is an array. So please treat it as a normal array, go through each value in turn and act like Lodash where you can pass an array to each filter and things like that. So we're gonna filter just like we did up here. In fact, we're probably gonna go ahead and copy paste everything except for the value, because we don't need to do that in RxJS. We don't actually have reject in RxJS. We're gonna do a filter and just change this to, instead of true, we're gonna do the opposite, which means parentheses there, equals equals false. Now we have an observable. He does the exact same thing that Lodash does. The difference is it also does this. So now we can get rid of those two functions. And then when we wanna use it, we can say get old node functions. Subscribe to it. Very similar to a dot then and a promise, except this. Passing three functions. First, the old functions that we got back from the parsing. Let's log them out. The error, just like a dot catch on a promise. Log out the error. And you can put a third function for done. We don't really care. We just wanna know, did it work? If so, gives our data. If not, we don't care. Now the last part is a bit tricky because we've converted a single value to an array, which Rx observables are great to stream each item in the array in order, and the on next is fired for each value. But originally we just wanted one value. We wanted the array of old functions, and there should be two items in there, just like Lodash. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we'll run this guy and say, hey, put some stars next to it so you can easily spot it. We'll run it, node index two, and you'll see that we got hey one and then hey two. So that's cool, we're finding the items. Downside is we wanted it as a single value. So what we'll do now is we'll say two array. So we'll convert it back to a single value. Now when we run it, you can see it calls hey and then it gives us an array instead of an object. And we're good, we have an array of two objects, exactly what we wanted. So we went again from a single value to a list of values that stream through back to a single value. Now our next gets one. And so this kind of feels or operates just like a promise. Ladies and gentlemen, is how you use observables to go from something that's synchronous like Lodash and Chain and doing a bunch of wonderful parsing and filtering pure functions inside of your array list comprehensions 
and then using promises to do asynchronous code, abstract that away, abstract in all the IO and weird side effects that you can't control. And you do the parsing inside, but you have to return it back as a promise to convert it. You can convert this whole sequence of stuff into a single RxJS stream. So you don't care if it's asynchronous or synchronous. You just know that at the end of the day, you get the values that you want and you return these observables from pure functions. And you can also continue to use pure functions in those streams as well as Lodash if you want to do that as well. So I hope that was helpful. Gives you an idea of using Lodash chain, which is amazing and using the asynchronous ways and putting those parsing and pure functions in there and showing you how RxJS can do that, but in one pure function. And it doesn't matter if it's asynchronous or not. And it gives you the flexibility to change that stream later and reorder in which way you do it. So it helps you parse. It helps abstract away the asynchronous and hopefully makes your life easier. Hey, my name is Jesse Warden. You got any other questions, hit me up on email, follow me on social media. If you like these videos, subscribe to my channel. You'll get them every day on YouTube and I will see y'all tomorrow.